They might not be the best, but they're definitely not the worst. Here on Tap Out Talk, this is our most honorable mentions of the greatest intercontinental champions of all time. They may not have met the cut for our Elite Eight video, but they are at least worth the mention. Let's get in. Our first up honorable mention is the infamous Pat Patterson. The first ever Intercontinental Champion in September 1979, the WWF would introduce this title and Patterson was crowned its first champion after a tournament, quote unquote, that was held in Rio de Janeiro. But however, the tournament never actually took place in the country. It was actually a fictional work for the on-screen story that was being told of this title's debut. It was said to have been a merger of South America Heavyweight Championship and the North American Championship, hence the Intercontinental Championship. Pat Patterson went on to hold the Intercontinental Championship in an impressive 232 days before losing it to Ken Patera on April 21st in 1980. The inaugural champion himself gets a spot on our list. Up next of our honorable mentions, the magnificent Don Morocco. The magnificent one held the Intercontinental Championship longer than any wrestler except for one other. And over two reigns as champion, Don Morocco held the belt 541 days with an impressive feat, no matter how anybody was to look at it. The most memorable feud would be with Pedro Morales from our Top 8 Elite 8 video. Morocco definitely deserves a mention and he's getting it here. Up next is Tito Santana. Tito Santana was one of the biggest fan favorites in the WWF in the early 1980s. He was very popular, engaging with fans, demonstrated a great in-ring paralysis. In 1983, he began what turned out to be a very long feud with Magnificent Morocco, previously mentioned, who was the IC champ at the time. February 11, 1984, Santana would finally capture the Intercontinental Championship from Morocco. In the process, he became the first Mexican-American Intercontinental Champion. Santana would drop the title to Greg the Hammer Valentine in September 1984, and he would later regain it from Valentine in an epic steel cage encounter in 1985. Santana nearly won the Intercontinental Championship a third time in 1990 as he reached the finals of a tournament to crown a new champion after the Ultimate Warrior vacated the IC title following his win over Hawk Hogan at WrestleMania 6. Santana did fall a little bit short, losing to Mr. Perfect in the finals. And speaking of the perfect contender, Mr. Perfect also gets a spot in these honorable mentions. Perfect, also known as Kurt Henning, might literally been overall perfect. He was one of the greatest Intercontinental Champions of all time. He held the title on two separate occasions for a total of 406 days. One of the most technically sound wrestlers of his generation. The perfect one exemplified everything that we think of when we consider one of the all-time greats in the title. And it made it really tough to not put him on the Elite Eight list. Mr. Perfect sets his sights squarely on capturing the Intercontinental title, which had been vacated again after the Ultimate Warriors win over Hogan at WrestleMania 6. He would defeat again Tito Santana in the finals of the tournament to crown the championship. Master of the Perfect Plex, he would defeat any challenger in the next four months and eventually losing the title to the Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich at 1990 SummerSlam. Mr. Perfect would win the title back from Von Erich in November of 1990. The Perfect second reign as champion was one of the most impressive in his time. And finally, our honorable mentions. We have Razor Ramon, who made history in April 10th, 1993, when he defeated Rick the Model Martel for the vacant Intercontinental Championship. In the 90s, Razor became the first ever four-time Intercontinental Champion, which still has an overall huge accomplishment to it to this day. Also, he accumulated 434 days as champion in total. And his feud with Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 10 truly stole the show in the first ever ladder match to be featured on a pay-per-view. Razor went on to have great feuds for this title with Diesel, Jeff Jarrett, and Goldust, just to name a few. However, he fell just short in making our Elite Eight list, which can be found here. 
Guys, these were our honorable mentions and great champions of their time. We just wanted to put those out there. Do you guys have an honorable mention that didn't make this list? Let us know in the comments down below. And also, guys, I want to let you guys know to like, share, subscribe. Hit that like button, share, subscribe, and let's get on to our final two honorable mentions for our bonus mentions here. China, the ninth wonder of the world, the only female to wear the intercontinental belt on two different occasions. In 1999, China got her first title reign, defeating a six-time champion, Double J, Jeff Jarrett, at no mercy in a good housekeeping match, which is basically a street fight. It would result in Jarrett's last WWF match, and he would later feud with Chris Jericho over the championship. That would result in a rare situation where both participants were pinned, resulting in Jericho and China being deemed as co-champions for the title. Being the only female to win one of the men's intercontinental championship, we felt that China deserved a very much place on this list. And our final overall honorable mention, bonus honorable mention here, is The Miz, who won his first Intercontinental Championship in 2012 from Christian and had a solid run. He then had a second reign that lasted 24 hours and a third reign that again lasted 24 hours. And you bet it, a fourth reign again that lasted 24 hours. It wasn't looking good for The Miz, but then The Miz won a title for the fifth time in 2016, cementing himself as one of the all-time greats to ever hold the Intercontinental Championship. Showing it as a working man's title, Miz went on to defend the belt against the likes of Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Cesaro, Extreme Rules, and one of the best matches ever for the title. He had honorable feuds with Dean Ambrose, the head of the table, Roman Reigns, in the legendary rivalry with Dolph Ziggler in the Battle of Ohio for this title. It was a epic title versus career showdown. When Miz had finished the Intercontinental Championship in 2018, he was an eight-time champion and the second most reigns behind Jericho previously, who was at nine reigns himself for the title. Miz combined a number of days of 592 days, making the Miz one of the best Intercontinental Champions and an honorable mention of the modern era. Guys, I want to say thank you. And again, you got an honorable mention for the IC title? Leave it down below. Tell me what your favorite match was. It's not goodbye around here. It's game over.